Nitrogen Trailer 1. Entry of nitrogen trailers shall only be on a hot work permit. 2. Only those trailer drivers who have been trained and certified shall sign executing authority column. Authorization shall be limited only to entry, exit and positioning of the trailer. Note, simplified and customized work permit training may be arranged. 3. The trailer shall have a spark arrestor, fire extinguisher and valid safety certificate unless waived by the shift leader during emergencies. 4. Trailer driver must be accompanied by a helper who shall guide the trailer while reversing. 5. Permit for truck entry shall be closed before issuing a permit to give connections. Likewise disconnecting permit has to be closed before issuing a permit for taking empty trailers out. Air Compressor 1. Some compressors are built with an internal cooling fan. When the power switch is turned on, the cooling fan will start up and operate continuously even when the pump has automatically shut off. 2. Turn the power switch to the off position when you are done using your air compressor. 3. Do not direct air stream at body. 4. Keep in mind that some compressors may be set to start automatically at preset pressures. 5. Do not touch moving parts. Keep all guards in place. 6. When the compressor is used to supply breathable air as in the case of blasting jobs, precautions as mentioned in she document, SWP on surface preparation and painting shall be taken. 7. Do not adjust a regulator to result in output pressure greater than marked maximum pressure of the tool or attachment you're using. 8. Do not damper the PSV mounted on the receiver. Do not operate without proper safety valve in place. 9. Drain liquid from the air tank daily or after each use. Failure to properly drain liquid from the air tank may cause rust from moisture buildup, which weakens the tank and could lead to a violent tank explosion. Dot garbage truck. 1. Only trained and authorized operators shall be permitted to operate the designated equipment. 2. Stand clear when tailgate or packing mechanism is opened or in motion. 3. Do not place hands or feet near any moving part or packing mechanism while the engine is running. 4. Whenever the tailgate is in any elevated or raised position it must be securely propped or blocked so it cannot fall. 5. Do not work on or near hydraulic pump, PTO, driveline universal or any rotating part while the engine is running. 6. Stop engine and remove ignition key before entering body. 7. Keep access door closed when ejector panel is in motion. 8. Do not drive or move the unit with the tailgate in any position except fully down and locked. 9. Never attempt to disconnect any hydraulic line unless pressure is released in the circuit and the machine elements to which the hydraulic actuator is attached are supported or blocked from movement. 10. Instruction and warning decals are important. Clean or replace all decals if they cannot be read. Use them for quick reference information. 11. Do not stand in the hopper or on the hopper sill while adjustments are being made on the packing mechanism with the machine running. During repairs to the tailgate, packing mechanism, or hydraulic drive system, a lockout procedure should be employed where the power shall be shut off, the ignition key removed, and a tag out sign placed on the steering wheel warning against any attempt to start the unit. Boom Truck 1. Do not modify or attempt to modify the structure or operation of the truck or boom. 2. A copy of the operator's manual shall remain with the equipment at all times. 3. Maintenance inspections. A. Garage technician inspections. B. Pre-operation inspections. Before beginning boom truck operations, the operator shall conduct a basic inspection of the boom truck. An inspection checklist shall be kept in the cab of the truck. The checklist shall document condition of the following items among other things the boom for visual inspection for cracks, hydraulic leaks, and other defects, function of lift controls. 4. 
Report any unusual observation or occurrence during truck and or boom operation that may indicate required maintenance, repair or a safety defect. 5. Before using the aerial device, the truck transmission shall be placed in neutral, please check in or P, parking brake shall be set and up. Outriggers set. The outriggers shall be positioned on pads or a solid surface. Outriggers shall be fully extended irrespective of whether load is being lifted or not. If outrigger footing is positioned onto weak soil or mud, use boards, gravel, or whatever means are necessary to obtain firm conditions. Use the following stability guideline. Firm conditions, concrete, cool asphalt. Weak conditions, bare soil, gravel, lawn, hot asphalt, similar materials. 6. Position the truck on as level a surface as possible before beginning aerial device operations. If the truck must be parked on an incline of 12% or greater, wheels shall be chocked. Provided they can be safely installed, wheel chocks shall be installed before using the aerial device on an incline. If chocks cannot be safely installed, the boom truck should not be used. 7. Operational Safety A. Keep objects and personnel clear of aerial device operations at all times. B. After positioning and leveling the truck, truck must be approximately level, and before beginning aerial device operations, set up a perimeter system of cones or barricades and caution tape for the purpose of keeping pedestrians away from the work area. 7. Before moving the boom truck for travel. The boom shall be inspected to ensure that it is properly cradled and out triggers are in the stowed position. Dump truck. 1. When the center of gravity of box and load is not roughly between the frame rails of the unit, there is a risk of tip over. 2. Stability is adversely affected by one or more of the following factors. A. The unit is not on a level surface when dumping. B. A large amount of material is in the upper portion of the raised box. C. Material does not flow out of the top portion of the box, or does not flow out of one side of the top portion. D. The rear wheels settle unevenly as the load moves to the rear during dumping. E. Wind may exert lateral loads, especially if the box is long, as is the case with end dump semi trailers. 3. Stability may also be affected by the unit's mechanical condition. A. Poor rear suspension systems on one side of the vehicle. B. Uneven tire pressures in rear wheels. C. Worn or inadequate components of the lifting system such as pins. D. Worn or inadequate lifting cylinders. 4. Maintenance can play an important role in preventing tip-overs. A. Check tire pressures daily. Tire pressure should be equal on each side of the vehicle. B. Examine and lubricate pins and bushings regularly. C. Inspect suspension systems under load to ensure that they work properly and provide even suspension. Weak suspension systems should be replaced immediately. D. Inspect hoist cylinders regularly. Worn cylinders should not be replaced with smaller cylinders or with cylinders rated at lower operating pressure. E. Make sure that repairs to boxes leave bottom and sides clear and unrestricted. Rough patchwork repairs near the top of the box can catch and hold sticky materials. 5. Loading A. Loading of the box front to back must meet allowable gross weight and axle weight limitations. From side to side it is best to load as evenly as possible. B. If material is likely to flow poorly, lighten up the load in the trough end of the box. A slightly smaller load will be better than a full load that causes a tip over. C. Box liners will help most materials flow better during dumping. Liners also help to keep the box in good condition. 6. Dumping. A. Operators should be trained to recognize areas hazardous to dumping, such as soft or uneven surfaces and inadequately compacted fill. b. Before dumping, operators should ensure that the tailgate is unlocked and that the vehicle is on a reasonably level surface. Dumping on surfaces that are not level is one of the main causes of tip-overs. c. 
before spreading material by dumping it from a moving truck, make sure that the entire length of travel is reasonably level. D. Trucks should not dump when they are parked side by side with another vehicle. When a dump unit tips over, it is often the operator in the adjoining vehicle who is injured. Dumping operations should be spread out. E. Other personnel such as dozer operators, surveyors, and spotters should be warned not to work near a dumping truck in case it tips over. F. Workers on foot should not congregate in areas where dumping is underway. G. When dumping wastes follow approved waste disposal procedures. Backhoe. 1. Before starting and while operating a backhoe, look for people or obstructions in the vicinity of the backhoe. 2. Employees working within an area where a backhoe is operating must wear flagging garments, that is, orange vests, and other mandatory PPE. 3. Prior to starting, learn the locations of underground and overhead utility lines, ditches, stumps, boulders, and other hazards or obstructions in the work area. 4. Always extend the backhoe stabilizers prior to starting an excavation task. 5. Always swing the backhoe arm uphill when excavating on a hillside. 6. When transporting material in a loader bucket, keep the loader bucket as low to the ground as possible to maintain backhoe stability. 7. Only raise the loader bucket for the purpose of dumping material. 8. Reduce speed when turning, crossing slopes, or driving on rough, slick, or muddy surfaces. 9. Only dismount, or mount, a backhoe when the engine is shut off. 10. Never adjust or work on a backhoe unless the engine is shut off and hydraulic pressure has been de-energized. 11. Be aware that braking conditions may vary due to mud, loose gravel or other conditions. There are always obstacles on the job such as rocks, stones and debris. Soft soil conditions exist around edges and deep holes. 12. When operating the loader be sure the backhoe is secured in the upright position and carry the loader bucket low, close to the ground. This allows maximum visibility and stability. Stay in gear when traveling downhill. Use the engine's RPM to help maintain control. 13. When working on backhoe, take precautions. Have it safely blocked before working under it or through the loader arms. Work with the bucket down. Follow the manufacturer's recommendations for routine maintenance. 14. Before beginning the backhoe digging process, lower the stabilizers so the wheels are off the ground leveling the unit. 15. Check the boom swings to avoid hitting anyone or anything that may be in the boom path. 16. Remember, the operator is permitted to operate the backhoe loader only from the driver's position. Never when he is on the ground. 17. Operators should never use a backhoe loader without an operator cab that does not have rollover protective structure, ROPS, or falling object protective structure, FOPS. 18. When operating on a slope, be sure the unit is level with the stabilizers. Swing loads uphill to avoid a balance problem while on the slope and place soil well away from the edge of the trench. 19. When loading dump trucks, the dump truck driver must be out of the cab and away from the process. 20. Never swing a load over the cab. 21. Backhoes get a lot of wear and tear and maintenance is required from time to time. Be sure the boom is adequately blocked to avoid a serious injury in case it falls. Never rely upon hydraulics to hold the boom. It must be blocked to avoid a fall. 22. Chalk the tires when working on the vehicle and keep the bucket teeth in good shape. 23. When refueling or handling fuel turn the engine off as well as electrical or spark producing motors. Ground the fuel nozzle or funnel against the filler neck to avoid static electricity. Please give comment and suggestions. Thank you. Subscribe our YouTube channel and hit the bell icon for more updates. Thank for visit our channel. See you next class. Thank you.